In May of 2009, conservative pollster Frank Luntz released a memo. The memo was titled, The Language of Healthcare 2009, The Ten Rules for Stopping the Washington Takeover of Healthcare. In that memo, Luntz advised conservatives to use phrases like rationing, Washington takeover, government run, government takeover, and bailout when addressing uh, health care reform. He also came up with the idea of a government bureaucrat getting, getting between you and your doctor, you know, pulling the plug on grandma, death panels, yada yada. That's all Frank Luntz. Uh, well, Mark D. Harmon of the University of Tennessee's College of Communication and Information, this guy reviewed the transcripts uh, by doing a Lexus, uh, Nexus search for all the cable news outlets, and he looked to see just how much Frank Luntz uh, and his invented terms steered the debate on health care reform. And uh, so what he did is he took Frank Luntz's terms and put them, uh, compared them to more neutral health care terms like uh, pre-existing conditions, lifetime limits, profits, insurance exchange, patient protection, affordable care. And what this guy found is that Frank Luntz's terms outnumbered neutral health care terms on Fox News, no surprise there, uh, and also made up a significant percentage of the terms used on CNN, MSNBC, and the night nightly news broadcasts on ABC, CBS, and NBC. So Luntz language was used 1,521 times on Fox, while neutral language on Fox was only used 1,122 times, so he has a majority on Fox. On other networks, get this, Luntz language was used 4,022 times and neutral language uh, was used 6,323 times. Now when you break this down uh, in terms of percentages, what you have is Fox News 58% of the time they use Frank Luntz language, 42% of the time they use neutral language, uh, and on the, in the rest of the media outlets, 61% of the time they use neutral language, but still 39% of the time they use Frank Luntz language. So what happens when you uh, set up something like this? What happens when you have loaded terms steering the debate? Well, you start to change public opinion. Now, this is the exact reason why Whenever you ask in polls, doesn't matter what poll you go to, whether you go to CNN, Pew, Gallup, whoever, right? And you ask, uh, do people have a favorable or unfavorable opinion of Obamacare? Do you like or dislike Obamacare? A majority of the American people say, usually in the range of 58% or so, uh, say, we dislike Obamacare. We don't like it. Now, when you break it down issue by issue and provision by provision of the details of the bill of Obamacare, the American people love it. In fact, it's one of the most popular bills by provision. They love the, you know, the part on pre-existing condition. They love the part on lifetime caps. They love the uh, Medicare expansion, uh, Med Medicaid expansion. They love the subsidies for middle class uh, workers. They love the exchanges. Almost every part, they absolutely love it. So what this shows you is that when you control the framing of the conversation, when you control the language, and very important, the Democrats never learn this, when you repeat yourself ad nauseum, ad infinitum, people don't get turned off. Now, liberals naively think, well, when people hear that Sarah Palin say uh, they're gonna, the government's going to kill your grandma and there's a government takeover of health care, they laugh it off. No, not true. Your average American, if you say it enough, the thought process that goes on in their head is, well, even if Sarah Palin is 10% justified in her outrage, well, then Obamacare is still pretty shitty. So I guess I don't like it, because she seems really passionate about it. She must be right. So what the Democrats need to do is steal this trick. Steal this trick. Come up with your own framing. And by the way, the Democrats have the advantage of they don't need to lie when they frame. They could use the facts and frame it properly. 